Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on how to create these beautiful seed bead bracelets. The bracelet that we're actually going to make are the, is the black and white bracelet that you can see on the stand. You'll have everything in your kit that will allow you to create this beautiful bracelet and the one next door and still have plenty of your seed beads left over. Within your kit you're going to get five different pots of your seed beads, all of the same size. You're going to get your needles, which you have four of, and your fire line, which is your threading material. You're also going to get a, a findings pack, which has got your um, clasps in there, some chain and some head pins. So I'm just going to move this to the side. Now, just purely for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use slightly bigger beads so that you can see the pattern forming. I've gone ahead and I've pre-threaded my needle with one meter of fire line attached. So when you're going to thread your fire line, the easiest way to thread it is, because this is a bonded material, if you run your nail down the fire line, it actually flattens the fire line out, which makes it easier to thread through the needle. I first of all have to add a stopper bead to my, to my piece of thread, and this will allow me to carry on beading and none of my beads fall off the end. So I'm going to take the first bead and the stopper bead, pick it up and let it go all the way down till I've got about 20 centimetres of my threading material left. I'm then going to go back through the same bead in the opposite direction. And this will then create a stopper and allow me to start my beading with nothing falling off the end. This bead will be removed at the end. So the pattern is consisting of three different colours. And like I say, you have lots of different colours. You've got five different colours within your, your um, seed beads, so you can choose whichever colours you like. So my first step is to pick up 12 of the first colour seed bead. Seed beads are very easy to pick up when you just tap your needle onto them, they tend to just jump onto your needle perfectly. And I'm going to let those go all the way down to the stopper bead. So I've got my first 12 in place. I'm now going to pick up three of my next colour, so in this case it's the blue. And I'm now going to miss the first three of my gold seed beads and pass the needle through the next three seed beads only. And what this is going to start to create is going to start to create our pattern. So we're just going to sort out all the thread until it's sitting nicely. So the three blue beads are sitting on top of the three gold beads. I'm then going to pick up another three blue beads. And like when you, like anything, when you first start doing a pattern, sometimes it can take quite a while for the pattern to show itself. So just persevere and just keep looking for the, those two sets of beads to sit on top of each other. So I've just added my three blue beads and I'm now going to miss the next three gold beads and go through the last three gold beads, making sure I don't pick up the stopper bead. So what I have now is I've got my first layer on my pattern. Now, if you need to tighten this up at any time, you can just push the stopper bead along and just give it a little pull and it'll start to tighten up. So now when I turn my work around so that I've got my three spare beads at the bottom here, and my thread is exiting that last bead next to that turquoise stopper bead, I can now pick up my next colour. So from now on, all you're looking for is you're looking for the three that are sticking up more than the others and you're going to fill the gaps with the next colour along. So I'm going to pick up three of my metallic beads and I'm going to pass the needle through the three blue beads that are sticking up. So when I'm beading anything with seed beads, it's a lot easier if you have your seed beads on something that's not slippy. So I'm actually beading on a piece of felt here or, or um, a very fine um, microfiber cloth or a tea towel, something like that, something that stops them rolling around and it's easier to pick your, to your, pick your seed beads up. So again, I've gone through those three blue beads. I now have a gap here, which again, I need to pick up three 
metallic beads. And I'm going to go through the next three blue seed beads. Now this stitch has got a name, it's called the peyote stitch. And this is an even count peyote stitch. So again, just making sure that you're pulling your thread nice and tight, not too tight that you're going to scrunch up your seed beads, but tight enough to be able to see um, that there's no gaps in between. So I'm now going to turn my work over again so that I've got my thread exiting out of the first blue bead on my right side. And I'm going to go back to my first colour, which was gold. So again, picking up three beads and looking for the beads that I've just added. So those metallic beads and go through the first three metallic beads and pull. So now again, I've got to have a gap above the blue beads. So I'm going to pick up another three gold and go through the last three metallic beads. So you can see how now that's starting to build up. Now again, I've got to the end of this row. So once more, I'm going to turn my work over. I can see now that my next layer is here with the gold beads. So I'm going to pick up three blue beads and go through the first three blue beads in the line and pull tight. Just making sure that that little tail end doesn't get caught. Now, if this happens where your threads just come a little bit too far away, if you just hold on to your work and just give it a little pull, it will start to settle down again and go back into line. So that's just to do with your tension. You just need to keep making sure that it's got the same tension all the way through. So I'm just going to finish this row off now by picking up another three blue beads and again going through the last three gold beads, making sure that you collect all three beads as you sew. So you're going to carry on in this way all the way to your desired length of bracelet. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that over so where I would start again is just onto this row. So you would then carry on until you have your desired length of bracelet. So I'm just going to move this one out of the way and I'm going to show you how you're going to finish off your bracelet. So I've got a piece here that I've made that's slightly longer. It's, it's not bracelet length, but it's enough to show you how I can then carry on with my putting my clasp on and my ending. So I've finished on the, my metallic beads. So I'm going to add in three gold beads. My thread is exiting to my right. So I know that I'm going the correct way. So through the three metallic beads and pull tight. And again, the next three metallic beads. I go through other ones on the end. And pull tight. So I'm now going to turn my work over again and I'm going to finish on a, a pure gold line now. So I'm going to put another three gold in each spot and then I can add on the loop for my clasp. So I'm just going to pick up another three, add that through the gold and you can finish on whichever colour you like. It doesn't, you know, as long as you've got like a solid block of colour, it doesn't have to be the same colour that you started with. And my last three are going to go in so now what i need to do is be able to pop in a little loop so if i just get the the bracelet to show you how the clasp is um is attached if i just spin that around so you can see so what we're now going to create is this little section here so we're now going to create that little loop and add our jump ring in so the way that we attach that is we're going to take our thread, making sure it's exiting on the, um, on the outside. We're going to work back through the second to last row. So if I was just to go through these first three beads now, they would actually fall off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my needle back through the row below. And you can, you can do this in one section or you can 
do it in a few sections like I'm doing. So I'm doing six beads at a time. And what this is doing is it's starting to firm up my bracelet. So it's starting to give me more of an ending. And I'm just gonna go back through the first row as well, or sorry, the last row as, it, as I look at it. Making sure that you pull all those beads nice and tightly and that you collect every single bead. So if you miss one like that, don't worry, just pop your needle down through and make sure you're exiting through the whole row. So what I've done now, by going back through those last two rows, I've now firmed up here. So I can now go through my first three beads in the row. So if I just go through those beads and then pick up nine of the same color bead to create the loop. And then go through the last three beads. So I'm missing out the middle six beads and go through those last three beads and pull tight. As you can see now, I've created that little loop that I can now attach to my clasp. But what I need to do before I attach the clasp is I need to just firm up that little loop. So again, I'm gonna turn my work over, go through the row underneath and work my way back up to the row above so that I can go along those last few seed beads that I've just added to firm them up because one, one pass through just isn't strong enough to actually hold this in place. So I'm gonna go through the first three as I did before. And then instead of going carrying along along that row, I'm gonna go through the nine beads that I've added to create the loop. And like I say, you don't have to go through all of them at the same time. Just take your time, make sure you collect them all together through the last three. And pull that nice and tight. So if you're, your um, thread gets looped over, just take your time just to unpick it over the top of the seed beads. And now to finish this section off, I'm just gonna go back through the second row one last time. And these seed beads have quite a good um, drill hole in them or, or aperture, so you can go through these seed beads quite a lot. Now that now is enough to be able to cut this little thread off. So using a sharp pair of scissors, Cut it as close as you can without cutting the other threads. I now have my ending in place. So what I'm gonna do now is take my round nose and my flat nose pliers. So my flat nose pliers are the handles with the, uh, the red handles and my round nose pliers are the pliers with the blue handles. Taking one of my toggle clasps from my findings pack and one of my, and two of my jump rings, I'm gonna just unassemble the toggle clasp, which has a jump ring in the middle, just to hold it together. So I'm gonna just take that jump ring, move, moving the jump ring around so that I can see the cut in the jump ring and opening the jump ring like a door or a gate, north to south, opening the jump ring, just take one of the elements off. Now with this jump ring open, I can now add that in where I would like my clasp. So just popping that through the seed beads and closing back up. So I now have one side of my toggle clasp attached. So now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat the process where we very first started. But if you can remember, we popped a little stopper bead onto there. So all we're gonna to do to remove the stopper bead is just pull that along the length and it will just slide off the end. I now have this 20 centimeters worth of fire line that I can thread my needle on and do exactly the same with my loop on this end. And you'll end up with a perfect, beautiful bracelet.